What? What are you doing? You know, I don't get what the big deal is. You've seen me do this before. You've seen me dress like this before. Remember Boston? Yeah, I remember Boston. And it wasn't cool then either. God, I don't understand why you have to be such a hater. I mean, I don't criticize you for your hobbies. Moving to Japan, trying to learn Japanese. That's pretty stupid. And I don't give you shit about that. You know, you're just really lame. Whatever, your mom's lame. Zombie Constantine here. I'm taking some time out of my busy schedule of hunting for brains and human flesh to talk to you all about something that's very important. Constantine's top five favorite Japanese zombie movies. First, I'm just going to say that I don't want to see any comments down here about how that's not the best Japanese zombie movie, this is the best Japanese zombie movie. Why didn't you mention this movie? Because Honestly, I haven't seen them all, and I don't care. So if you want to read more extensive reviews of any of the stuff I've talked about in this video, any of the movies, there are links to my blog down in the bottom bar thing. Alrighty, at number five, Stacy, Undead Japanese Schoolgirl. Ooh yeah. This movie is pretty interesting. It's not perfect, and I don't really understand it, but I don't know. I thought it was uh, pretty, pretty decent, pretty worthwhile. It's directed by Tomomatsu Naoyuki, and it's based on a novel by Otsuki Kenji. So hopefully the novel makes more sense. It kind of felt like this movie was trying to say something the whole time, but didn't really manage to say it. The movie is basically about how, for some inexplicable, unexplained reason, uh, all of the girls in the world between the ages of 15 and 17 start turning into zombies and their parents and boyfriends have to kill them. Yeah, I don't know what's up with all these movies where you gotta, like, kill Japanese schoolgirls. It might have something to do with Japanese men feeling intimidated by women. I don't know. Could be. This movie has everything that a Japanese zombie movie could possibly have in it. It's got schoolgirls, zombies, duh, uh, mad scientists with glasses, uh, old dudes having sex with young girls, uh, soldiers, guns, girls in cosplay outfits who like to fight zombies. I mean, really, it's got it all. Most importantly, it's got some really great genre spoofs in it like uh, the Romero repeat kill troops. Kill your daughter and we'll take care of our own. Sanctioned by the UN to repeat kill Stacy's. And uh, Bruce Campbell's right hand too, which is apparently a uh, nice handy chainsaw appliance that you can use to kill your daughter with. So uh, it comes in multiple colors. So if you're looking to accessorize while you slaughter hordes of the undead, this is the way to go. But I mean, this movie is kind of silly too. Uh, a lot of it just seems like an excuse to have young, hot girls dressed up in schoolgirl outfits, like, dressed up like zombie schoolgirls. I mean, who wants to dress up like a zombie schoolgirl? That's just kind of stupid. So, Stacy's pretty decent. You should watch it. Or maybe you should watch it while you're drunk. That might make it more enjoyable. So yeah. Number four. Versus. Uh, Versus came out in 2000, and pretty much anyone who watches uh, Japanese cult cinema has probably heard of this movie. It was written and directed by Kitamo Ryuhei, and it stars Sakaguchi Tak and Tak Tak, I don't know, and uh, the other dude, Sakaki Hideo. So it stars them, and, and this movie is basically, it's, it's like an anime, 
uh, you have a, a valley, and the valley contains uh, the 444th portal, or the Chi 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 Death portal, and apparently this portal can reanimate dead bodies. And unfortunately, Yakuza have been using it to bury their victims, so <laughs> there's a lot of dead bodies in there. <laughs> and you've basically got a good guy, and a bad guy, and a girl. And the good guy tries to protect the girl, while the bad guy tries to kill the girl. But the good guy has to defeat, like, the evil henchmen of the bad guy, who all are dressed in, like, sort of interesting costume outfits. Uh, he's got to defeat them before he can defeat the bad guy. And then they fight at the end, and the fight is epic. It's got samurai in it, it's got yakuza in it, it's got a girl standing around being wide-eyed and innocent and being like, huh, protect me, but don't kill anyone because killing things are bad. It seems like in this movie everyone has unlimited supplies of ammunition. Um, and like any good American, I know that unlimited supplies of ammo equals unlimited amounts of fun. Number three is Zombie Jietai. Oh yeah, Zombie Jietai. Uh, or a Zombie Self-Defense Force. This movie has got to be the most ridiculous genre spoof I have ever seen. It was also directed by Tomomatsu Naoyuki, who did Stacy. Um, and it's it's got like it's like Stacy. It's got everything in it. It's got aliens and zombies. I don't know why Japanese movies like to connect aliens and zombies because they don't have anything to do with each other. But it's got aliens and zombies and Yakuza and Chimpira and bitchy manipulative Japanese pop idols. But I mean, really, is there any other kind of Japanese pop idol? I didn't think so. Uh, and it also has inept Japanese soldiers, it has uh, ghosts of World War II Japanese Imperial Army soldiers, it has, uh, and oh, most importantly, it has uh, female androids in it. So, that's not the low. It also has some pretty uh, funny commentary uh, about World War II and post-war Japan and the GATI, the Japanese Self-Defense Force, which is, it's always getting shit from all sides. I mean, the right wing doesn't like them because they're too weak. The left wing doesn't like them because they go against Article 9. I mean, no one likes the GATI. It's a, it's a tough break for them.